The bootstrap components that we looked at in the previous video were mostly about style, about how our various elements looked. In this video, we'll be looking at ones that are more about function, and we'll be doing a bit of jQuery as well to interact with those elements. And I'm going to start by looking at modals, which are essentially pop-up boxes to show your user some information or to allow them to do a particular action like send a tweet or something like that. So they're really useful and again you can use them without any JavaScript but we can use some JavaScript if we want to do something a bit more fancy. So I've gone for the live demo option which I want to run on my site. I don't want to spoil the surprise by trying it on the bootstrap site. Let's see how it looks. So I've copied the whole code. I'm going to get rid of everything here and then paste that code in. So let's take a look and see what it does and then we'll run through the code. So all we've got now is a button. Click that and our modal appears. So you can see it's got this nice kind of slide in from the top. It fades out the background. It makes the background unclickable as well in that you can't interact with it, but if you do click on the background, it closes the modal, which is what the user would expect. And we've got two default buttons here, a close and a, that could be a send button or an okay button, depending on what the modal was doing. So hopefully you can imagine a huge number of uses for that. Let's have a quick look and see how the code works. So the button itself is pretty straightforward. It's just a button with classes to make it large and blue but we're toggling the existence of a modal here. And the particular modal, the target that we're working with, has an ID of my modal. And that's it, that's all we need to give to the button. On the modal itself, we've got a div with a class of modal and then fade, because this is gonna be a fading modal. You can see if we remove the fade class, it still appears just a little bit more quickly. So the fade kind of brings in a gradual slide from the top. We've got that ID there. This new attribute called tab index. This is used because a lot of people navigate through websites using the tab button or particularly through forms because the tab button can take you from one form input to the next. But we wouldn't want a user that was doing that to end up on our modal. We set the tab index to minus one and then anything on this modal won't be considered part of the tab flow as the user tabs through the content of the main page. The role of the modal is a dialog box. Dialog essentially is another word for modal. And then got some accessibility information as well. Then we've got another div within that, which has a class of modal dialog. This is the document. So this is a kind of container for the modal itself. Then we've got a container for the modal. Then we've got a container for the header part of the modal. A bit easier if we can see it there. So there it is. So the header has the X button on the right there, which we saw in the previous video when we were looking at alerts. So it's exactly the same as that. And then we've got an H4 with a particular class of modal title to fit in with the modal an ID and then the title itself. Then the modal body so we could put anything in there and then the modal footer which generally will contain buttons to either do something or not do something depending on what the user chooses. So hopefully you get the idea. That's how modals work but I want to use modals as a quick example of how we can use jQuery to interact with the bootstrap component such as a modal. So if we go back and have a look at the bootstrap page on modals, you can see we've got options and methods and events here. So you'll remember, hopefully those from when we were looking at jQuery plugins, specifically jQuery UI. So options are things that we can add to our modal to make it display in a certain way. Methods are making the modal do something. So with methods, we can make the modal do something. So toggle its existence, for example, show or hide or apply some options to it. And finally, events are things that happen when the modal is interacted with. So we might want to do something when the modal is shown, for example. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna imagine that we've got three buttons, which are all contact buttons, which send an email. So let's change our code from 
launch demo modal to email Rob. And then I'm going to have a second button, email Kirsten. And let's have a third button, email Tommy. Ralphie's too young to get email at this point. There we go. So each of these links to the same modal. at the moment. And what we want to avoid doing is having three completely different modals for each of these because they're all going to have very similar code. The only thing different is the email address. So let's see how we can work with the jQuery in Bootstrap to make that happen with just one modal code. So I've jumped through a lot of options there. You're very welcome to look at those in more detail if you like, but I'm more interested in the code at this point. So this is the main thing that we're going to be using. So we use a jQuery selector as usual to select our modal. And what we're looking at is we're looking at the event when the modal is shown. And this is called here show.bootstrap.modal. Then when that happens, we want to call a function, which is the code that we're gonna add down here. And that function is gonna have a variable called event which as we've seen before, contains a bit of information about what triggered the modal. So let's copy everything over and see if we can figure a way to integrate it with our code. So I'm gonna put my jQuery code in its own script. Section, but make sure you do it after jQuery and Bootstrap, otherwise you may have problems. So let's get rid of these comments for the moment and indent everything nicely. So let's work our way through this button variable we get from event, this variable here, dot related target. So that gives us the button that was clicked. And then we can take from that button its data attributes. So for example, I might want to get the data name attribute. And then I could very neatly set a data dash name attribute for each of these. So Rob, Kirsten, and Tommy. And then I would able to be able to access that down here. So for now, before I do anything too fancy, let's alert recipient. And we should find then that now, when we click on the button, as well as launching the modal, it does the alert, but of course it doesn't. Why is that? Aha, I think because I've kept it as example modal rather than my modal, which was the ID of the correct modal that we actually used. One of the dangers of, of copying and pasting, especially from two different sections. There we go. So now we've got our alert and our modal as well. Let's pop those back in. Then we're using this this keyword that we've seen before, and we're, it's the modal that we're working with here. So it's essentially my modal. So I could use that there as well, and it would work exactly the same. But this makes it a bit more flexible if you update the ID here. For some reason, you don't need to update it there as well. And then we're looking within the modal, and we're finding the class of modal title, and then we're changing that to have a text of new message to, and then recipient. And then we're updating an input there, but we don't have that input, so I'm just gonna get rid of that bit. So now, when we run it, we should find that we get new message to Rob. New message to Kirsten, and new message to Tommy. All right, so that's how we work with the JavaScript here. I'm gonna give you a quick challenge. Can you do something similar so that when the modal is closed, you get an alert saying modal closed? 
So really simple. When the modal is closed, whichever one it is, you get an alert saying modal closed. Go for it. Did you manage it? You may have gone back to the Bootstrap page to have a look at the events. I think this one is going to be the one that we're interested in, but let's have a look at the events. So we've got hide bootstrap modal. We could also use hidden bootstrap modal, which happens when the hiding process is complete. So all we need is a string. We want to select my modal again. And we want to do something on hide dot bootstrap modal. And the thing we want to do is a function. Again, it's going to have an event, even though we don't care about the details of that event. And whoops, I didn't mean to close my parentheses there. And all we want to do is when the modal is closed, alert modal closed. All right, let's check that in action. So new message to Tommy, great. Close that down. And of course it does nothing because I forgot my hash symbol. Just try that one more time. There's Tommy. Close that down and modal closed. So notice that this popped up actually just before the modal was closed. If we wanted to have it just after, we we'll change that to hidden.bootstrap.modal and then we get the alert after the modal is closed. All right, so hopefully that gives you a bit of insight into how you can interact with these Bootstrap JavaScript components and make them behave the way you want them to. Let's just have a very quick look at a couple of the other cool JavaScript components. First one we'll look at is the popover, which is a way of displaying information next to or around uh, another element. So I'll show you the live demo this time to speed things up a little bit. And it looks like that. Pretty cool. And you can get rid of it by clicking on the button again. So let's copy the whole lot there. And we'll add that in underneath our buttons. So let's just have a quick look at the code that does that. It's very simple. It's just a single button with a type of button and then classes for styling. But this time we're toggling a popover and the actual content of the popover is actually contained within data elements in the button itself. So we've got the title and we've got the content right there. Notice though that if we run this and click nothing happens. Now that's for two reasons. Firstly, we need to include a third party library to get popovers working. And we can see that up here, the popovers rely on the third party library tether for positioning. So we have to include that file in order to make it work. So let's do that. Let's find a CDN or content delivery network for tether. There we go, cdnjs.com. Great. So all we need is the Tether JavaScript, and we might as well go for the minified version. So I'm just going to copy that link, and then I'll insert it just before the bootstrap code in the usual way. So script src equals, and then we want that whole link there, and then end the script. We don't need any integrity or cross-origin attributes this time. And of course, if you want to download the script instead, then you could just do that directly from there. And the advantage then would be it's stored on your site and you have more control over it. All right, there is one more thing we need to do though. Unlike modals, popovers are not enabled by default for performance reasons. So if we want to use them, we need to manually enable them using a code similar to this. So I'm gonna pop this in to my JavaScript just there on the page. And this will select all of the items with a data toggle of popover, i.e. all the popovers. 
and then it will apply the popover function to them, which will make them popovers. So that was two fairly major steps that we needed to do for popovers that I wanted to show you. But now we should find that when we click popover, it, it displays. So there, I'd probably want to do popover underneath the button. So here's a quick challenge for you. Can you switch the popover so it's at the bottom of the button rather than on the right? Did you manage it? It's just a matter of looking at the relative code. So we've got popover on top, right, and then underneath that one, bottom. So we're going to want the third one along. Let's have a look. What's the code? Data placement bottom. That looks very relevant for us. So let's just add that in. Could go anywhere in our button code. And then run that again. And now the popovers at the bottom. So the last thing I want to show you then is tooltips. And they these are very similar to popovers, but popovers tend to stay there until you manually dismiss them by clicking the button, whereas tooltips just appear on hover. So back on Bootstrap again then. Let's have a very quick look at tooltips. And again, for time, I'll show you how they work on the site. And notice that we're going to need to enable them again. They require Tether as well, but that's okay because we've already got Tether set up. So let's add our code for that there. And then let's go for a tooltip on the bottom. For the same reason, I'll pop over on the bottom. So now we should be able to get that working. There we go. So the tooltips appear on hover and disappear when you move out of the button. So a very quick final challenge then to see if you've got the hang of interacting with these things. Can you create an alert which displays as soon as the tooltip itself displays? Go for it. All right, hope you pulled that off. To do something when something else happens, we're definitely looking at an event here. Okay, and we've got show, shown, hide, and hidden. We're definitely going to want either show or shown, depending on whether you want it just before the tooltip displays or just after. I'm going to go for shown, I think. And we can see that it's a very similar syntax to what we used for the modal. So let's type it out ourselves because I think we can. Let's check out to see if our tooltip has an ID. No, it doesn't. So we could select it using this, but I want to be a bit more specific, so I'm going to give it an ID. And my tooltip seems sensible. There we go. And then we just select it in the usual way, so with a hash for ID, and then my tooltip. And we want to do something on, i.e. when, a certain, meth a certain event happens. And the event that we're after is not hidden, it's shown dot bootstrap dot tooltip. And we want that to happen, or we want a certain function to happen when that's done. And the function that we want is alert tooltip displayed. Okay, close the parenthesis. And there we go, that should do it. Let's have a look. Wonderful, tooltip displayed. Brilliant. So I hope that's given you a bit of an idea how we interact with these components in a bit more detail using jQuery. In the next video, which is the final one before our big bootstrap challenge, I'm gonna get you to attempt to figure out how the scroll spy plugin works and create a working version in your bootstrap.html page. Hurrah!